Hello, my name is Jesse, and this is the Auditorium where I react to video game music as a musician myself. Today is a Platinum Patreon request for Shadow Maxim. This is a new game on the series, Poison Control, and the song is called Mirror and Inklet. I've never heard of this game, although I, I looked up a tiny little bit of it. It was released in 2020 on the Nintendo Switch, and that's all I know about it. There's also another little thing I saw, but I won't mention that until a little later. I just want to see what uh what happens with it but i don't know what this is i don't even know who the composer is um this doesn't even have that many views and it's kind of short so it has everything going against it <laughs> but uh that's okay anyways this is mirror and inklet from poison control let me know if you've played this game or have heard of it let's go big ass sit oh That sounds wonderful in my ears right now. Wow, this sounds so good. <laughs> Oh, those big 80s drums I love with that reverb every hit sounds like you're in an arena I like how these became like a full signifier, but hey. Is it over? Almost. It's already looped. So this is uploaded by a channel called Pika, and um, I'm just going to read the description here because there's not a lot of info that I could find. It says, Poison Control, and in parentheses it says, Shouju Jikogu no Doku Musume is a game composed by Nippon Ichi Software. I feel like I've heard of that name before. Uh, and I, I believe, I believe the composer might be Takashi Okamoto, aka 12 sound. Okay. <laughs> so first, let me first talk about, um, unrelated, but the, the glasses, I just, I just think it's funny because I want to mention it. Um, they've kind of become this kind of like symbol on my channel of like, if it's cool, if it's really cool, like, you know, do you guys remember the game Parappa the Rapper where like you would just do kind of 
shitty, okay, good, and then if you were like really sick, it would go to cool. I always thought of it that way. Like they've become this kind of just symbol of like you know, Jesse really likes it type of thing. It was never supposed to be that way. I remember, I just remember buying them because my old place, my computer was in front of my window and I always recorded um, in the evening so the sun would always hit me. And it's just, I don't know, it's just funny that it became a, a thing. And uh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> so I've never heard of this game. I've never even heard anyone talk about it, nothing. In fact, when I Googled it, uh, Google was telling me the nearest poison control number in case I, <laughs> I needed an emergency. So it's it's a little, you know, obscure. But I'll tell you what, when I saw that before I started the song, I'm like, you know what, this is probably going to be really sick. Because the songs that are like underdogs and the ones that no one knows about, those, those tend to be some of my like really favorite songs, you know, that happened. Um, I remember specifically a game called Viscera Fest that's on this channel. No one's even seen that video and it's like one of my favorite things I've heard in my life, <laughs> you know? So I just had this feeling, I'm like, this is gonna this is gonna slap super hard. I don't know why, but I didn't think it was gonna sound like that though. So right out the gate, we have this kind of like synth wave type thing. And I just kept Im imagining all those things from like the 80s Tron and like those triangles and squares, those pink, that pink aesthetic and the, you know, sunsets and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it, it was it was mixed very well. It's really punchy. A lot of attack on the percussion. The bass obviously is going crazy. Every, everything I'm pretty sure everything was all synthesized. Um, <laughs> the song is called "Mirror and Anklet." That's very specific title, which I have no idea what. I'm, and I'm, I'm just now looking at the art, and it's kind of a little bizarre. I mean, we have a character with a skeleton arm. Uh, holding a, I, I guess, rose, which is also looks like the rose that's part of the logo. I don't know. This is this, this looks like a very uh, abstract title. Um, it kind of reminded me of the game Fury a little bit, the soundtrack Fury, a, a little bit. Um, but here's one thing I, I do want to say. I mean, honestly, I'm not even going to lie. I have no idea where that would play. Or anything, you know. To me, it sounded like because I, I don't know if it's an open world game RPG. I don't know, but it, it definitely sounded like it could have been in kind of like this. You know, I don't think it's fair. I think it's just this image seeping into my subconscious. But I felt like it was kind of like aerial. It was kind of in the sky or something. And I don't know if I actually believe that or if it's just because I looked at that. I don't know. But it did kind of sound like a little open and airy and like you know, kind of something like that. <clears throat> but one thing. It's totally, it, it was irrelevant. I thought about not even bringing it up, but you know, it's something that crossed my mind. Um, I never look at really any information before I find, before I listen to a song. If anything, I'll maybe just look at the composer sometimes. I don't really look at dates, console, anything, unless it just skims past my eye. I'm like, oh, okay. But I try not to know anything about it. It's just more fun that way. And um, I did notice one thing, which caught my eye, and that was like the ratings were kind of like on the lower side. And that obviously does not matter. That's, I don't review games on this channel, I don't do any of that. But I just found it interesting because um, a, most of the games that I do cover, I've noticed are rated pretty high, like in the 8s, 9s, and 10s. And of course that's subjective, but, if, but for something to be rated this low, I was like, huh, okay. So it made me twice as excited to hear it because I, I really, at that point, knew that the music, I don't know why I knew this or how, but I just knew the music was going to be dope as soon as I saw that rating, which was about a five or a six. And, uh, you know, of course, like I said, that's, that, that does not matter. It doesn't influence me at all. It just kind of heightened my curiosity. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so if you have played this game, which I'm going to assume not a lot of you have, I'm going to take a wild guess that most people that watch this video are going to hear it for the first time with me because I know a lot of people that subscribe to me like to discover stuff with me. And that's great. And I'm almost willing to bet that it's going to overshadow the people that do know this song or that do know this game. So I'm very curious on the comment section how this one's going to be, like what you thought about it as a stranger like me 
or and what you thought about it as someone who knows and you thought no one would ever cover this type of thing or maybe it's just more popular than i think and i'm just living under a rock but um sounded great <laughs> sounded fantastic um that's it you know i just i just sounded great it's something that i would listen to honestly like at the gym or maybe even like a drive through the city or something like that it just sounded cool and i have no idea where it would play and i have no guesses because the name is so confusing um you know it's called mirror and anklet so we have literally a thing that can see yourself with and a piece of jewelry that goes around your ankle those are two polar opposites so me trying to guess where that would play would just be a shot in the dark but if you want me to take a shot in the dark sure i don't let me see i'm trying to think right now i'm trying to produce whatever comes out of my head uh i would say this song plays i don't know i would say it plays in something that has to do with mountains literal shot in the dark let me know how far off i am because that name, that, that name is confusing and the song didn't match the song name at all. There's just a whole lot of uh, tomfoolery in my brain, but it was great. It was cool. Um, no idea what Poison Control is, <laughs> but that's great, man. I, I really do think that there's just some sort of like magical occurrence when it comes to these kind of fly on the wall games that you know the, when i mean that i mean like you know you don't have like your zeldas your sonics you just like these just other because i listen to everything right i appreciate video game music as a whole so you know just because the game is not popular or whatever or favored critically you know doesn't mean it doesn't have stuff going for it in this case this sounds better than a lot of vgm that i've heard as far as like quality you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So you can't judge a book by its cover. You can't do any of that. So it just it just kind of proves that if you don't give things a chance, you know, why judge? You're missing out on whatever could be out there. If you only like a certain type of genre, imagine all the stuff you're missing out on just because of one bad experience or because of one person you may have not liked. That just goes for life in general. Anyways, before I get too philosophical, that song was sick. So, <laughs> uh, thank you, Shadow Maxim, for that. If you want to make a request as well, you can do so on Patreon or PayPal. Either are totally fine if you do not mind waiting. There is a wait list, though, quite, quite long. If you do not want to wait, there is the Platinum Trophy tier on Patreon and uh, basically skips the line. And uh, limited spots, only 10 spots available. Um, I'm not sure how many there is now. But a big thank you to my current supporters, Justin, Kevin, Patrick, your average metalhead. Shadow Maxim, Vanadel, Turnarklay, and Kalanin. That's eight, so I guess there's two spots left. I was counting with my fingers as I was saying that. Um, until next time, dudes and dudettes, um, this was fun. My name is Jesse in the auditorium. I will see you all later. Let me know more about this game. Peace.